There's an old man, and he's perusing a garage sale, looking at all the items. When he sees outside of the sale a girl, a little girl who had set up her very own bake sale. And he strides over to her, and she is kind of hunched over, counting the money she had made for the bake, from the baked goods she had already sold that day. Wanting to get her attention, he pulls out a dollar and says, what's a cute girl like you doing selling cookies? The girl looks up confused and says, I'm a dude. That little girl was me. <laughs> Every single one of us is wearing big, ugly glasses. You're wearing big, ugly glasses. You're wearing big, ugly glasses. You're wearing big, ugly glasses. Your ancestors have passed down to you genetics that have shaped the way you think. And your family, your friends, and your culture have shaped the way you act. So let's go back to little girly Nathan. <laughs> the year is 2005. And I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard a quote or seen a motivational poster that has just kind of stuck with you? You may have seen it four years ago, three months ago, seven years ago, but it has just stuck with you. In 2005, I saw a message on the wall that would change the way I thought forever. And this was during a time that I had just moved from New York to Missouri and I was, I was trying to make friends, and I didn't understand why other kids weren't relating to me. So before I tell you what that message was, I want to tell you the three things I've learned since then that have helped me really understand what the message meant. And the first has to do with evolution. 30,000 years ago, your ancestor was walking through the forest when he saw a predator. It may have been a lion. And his eyes sent a message to his brain, and his brain sent a message to the rest of his body registering that this is danger. His heart started pumping, his pupils dilated, and adrenaline coursed through his body. And he knew at that moment what to do. He ran. And he ran and he ran back to a tribe where he knew he had a family to take care of and friends who would help protect him against predators. Now flash forward 30,000 years. The same brain, the same body, the same survival-based way of thinking in a completely different environment. Applied Evolutionary Psychology, published by the Oxford University Review, states that our mind is working to solve ancestral issues at its most basic level. And these issues include finding a mate, they include increasing our status, they include making friends, and they include avoiding danger. And those subconscious motives are driving the way we behave in today's society. Which brings me to culture. When you walked in here today, this morning, you probably stayed with the people you were familiar with. Applied evolutionary psychology tells us that this is an ancestral, that this is ancestral. Our mind is hypersensitive to danger. So naturally, anything, so naturally we're skeptical of anything that's unfamiliar. So when you walked in here this morning, you were talking to your friends, and most of you stayed within your own social group, with the people that you were most familiar with. But not the whole time. You knew that you could go up, shake someone's hand, introduce yourself to someone you've never met before. And why? You knew by looking at them that you had something in common with them. You knew by the way they dressed that they were probably pretty, pretty average. You knew when, once you walked up to them that they spoke English, so you had a median to talk through. And you knew that based on the way they were communicating with you through their body language and other messages, 
that you could continue conversation. If I walked up to somebody, shook their hand, and they smiled and started talking to me, I knew it was okay to continue a conversation. If I were to have walked up to any one of you this morning, shook your hand, and you kicked me in the shin, I probably would have known that it wasn't okay to keep talking with you. <laughs> and that is culture. Also, we've seen presentations about superheroes. We've seen presentations about communism. And we've seen presentations about all of us uploading to Facebook. Now, why do we associate superheroes with comic books? Why do we have a negative stigma about communists? And why does almost everyone in this room upload to Facebook? And the answer is cultural influences. Your behavior is shaped by how society influences you. And that's where culture comes in. A way to break these bias, the biases you may have, the stereotypes you may have, is through experience. When I introduce myself, the second question that's usually asked is, where are you from? Hi, I'm Nathan Swan. I'm from New York. What do most of you think when I say I'm from New York? <laughs> most of you think New York City. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I'm from upstate New York, but most people associate the entire state with one little corner of the state called New York City. I'm from a small apple orchard, not from the big apple, from the small apple. So I'd like to take 30 seconds. I have a minute left. Think of something that people associate with you that's not necessarily true and share it with your neighbor. 30 seconds. Four, three, two, one. It may have been hard to think of something, but I guarantee every single one of you has been interpreted, has been misinterpreted at some point in your life. And I guarantee you've misinterpreted someone else. So let's go back to little girly Nathan Swan struggling to make friends in sixth grade. He looked and saw a message on the wall that would change his perspective. And here was the message. Watch your thoughts, they shape your words. Watch your words, they shape your actions. Watch your actions, they shape your habits. Watch your habits, they shape your character. And watch your character, it shapes your future. Only when we understand that our subconscious drives our conscious, can we begin to change the way we think. Only when we understand that the influences of culture have changed our behavior, can we change the way we act. And only when we understand that perception leads to judgment, can we begin to take off our big, ugly glasses and begin to shape the world. Thank you.